what I have said about the internal structuring of momenta also applies to the choice of material. You may remember that the opening of this version started with the I am moment. It is an informal indeterminate moment with the M characteristics. And it was what I call usually the applause moment. You remember there was a, an ordinary applause at the beginning and uh, it is one of the possible beginnings of momenta. When I am is in the beginning, then the conductor comes on the stage, he makes his bow to the public. The public usually applauds when he comes in on stage. Then he turns quickly around, gives the sign, and then the whole choir starts applauding the public. <laughs> and then one by one, in certain signs, uh, this applause is structured. For example, the <coughs> and then again, normal applause, statistical applause, statistic applause. And then here and there, the first sounds come in from the bass singers. Oh, that, thou where, my brother. And then, again, uh, vertical blocks of applause. And uh, trombones come in with pitches. And more and more, this ordinary material is transformed into musical material. It's musically organized. There is an aspect how uh, material of the everyday experience is integrated into this work. There's hardly a, a strict, a clear borderline between what is musical material and what is material of our daily environment in this piece. The same is true for the choice of the verbal material. Between found objects of the daily life, you heard at the end, bravo, poo, etc., these uh, single syllables that uh, we sometimes use in public in order to uh, praise something, to acclaim something, or to protest against something, are raw material. Uh, you will hear in the continuation, particularly here in the K moments, that I have used quite a lot of words, syllables, shouts that I have heard during the performance of my own music uh, from the side of the public. Uh, stop it. Uh, uh, this uh, ugly, beautiful, uh, um, terrible, or um, uh, be quiet, or all these, these sort of, of remarks that you hear, um, I have used them as material. And uh, then uh, I have indicated how these syllables should be uh, used. For example, sometimes it's very strictly um, ordered in rhythms. I can only say it in, in German at the moment. Bravo, ja, nein, doch, nein, ja, ja, nein, nein, ja, nein, ja, nein, weiter, etc. It's then stylized. Or it says all of a sudden, ugly, beautiful, ugly, beautiful, ugly, beautiful, etc. They start singing like priests in a, in, a, in a church with these words that I have heard in the part of the public. This is raw material that you can find here and there. Names, onomatopoetic material which imitates sounds that you hear in the world of the animals or where, where it is, in the, the traffic. Then uh, the material that is already a little more <coughs> structured. For example, at the end that you have just heard, in this moment and the moment, the solo soprano is given to the, is given to the solo soprano a series of syllables like nimi 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 nama na nama yama na du etc. And she can repeat them in uh, in any order and each syllable several times. And then she is asked to tell to to use also certain intelligible words and to uh, use this whole material in order to tell the choir singers a story. And on the very day of that performance, for example, which happened in Donaueschingen. 
We arrived in Donaishing and there was the dress rehearsal and all of a sudden uh, the orchestra, orchestra diener, the man who helps the orchestra, comes in and says, the trumpets and trombones have not arrived. So we had no trumpets and trombones during the dress rehearsal and we had to rehearse without the brass. And the afternoon was the first performance at 5 o'clock and still at 4.30 there were no trumpets and no trombones. A uh, big excitement, two and a half thousand people had, had arrived for this festival in Donaueschingen, it's in a small village in the Black Forest in Germany, once a year. And then they decided very quickly to switch the programs. The La Salle Quartet that had to play in the evening should play at five o'clock and eventually the trumpets and trombones would arrive by eight o'clock. And I was in the hotel ready to go, on, go to the hall and then someone said, no, no, uh, you have to wait until tonight. We have changed the program. About five minutes past five, someone rushes into my room and says, they have arrived. Come in, we, we have to perform. And then uh, we, well, the trumpets and trombones were outside of the hall uh, in order to warm up the instruments. They had come in a private car. The box had simply been left in the radio in Cologne and they were blowing, whereas inside the public was already waiting for the beginning. I jumped on stage and I said, good luck to all of us, and then we started. And then the so solo soprano, in this moment, started doing her impossible, and the trumpets were not there. <laughs> and then we were waiting all day. Isn't it incredible? She said to the choir singers, and the choir singers started lifting her. And one by one they started laughing like they were laughing. And so the, this whole moment became a real moment because she said, yeah, you remember that? And then she says, Nein, ja doch, und dann die Trompeten waren einfach weg, she said. And they didn't come, the trumpets, and, and then we were waiting until five past five, she said, imagine that. <laughs> and and the, whole, the whole public in the, in, in the, the, didn't understand quite well what to say, but the choir was so heated up. It was the most marvelous performance you can imagine, because it was so real. There's another moment here, the MM moment, where in her solo, where she does all the hiccups, and hic id and so she says, dippity bippity dick, I did, yeah, yeah, etc. There she tells a story. Uh, she tells a riddle. And one by one, she reveals a place which is the gardens of Engadi, where something has happened. And she says, oh, it's of Eng. Uh, no, she says, an, um, ing, eng. Then she says again, duk duk duk, hik, ah, hik, etc. And then she says, ga, 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 ga. G, g, g. So one by one, the, the, the vineyards in the garden of Angadi are revealed <coughs> silver by silver, and all the onomatopo uh, no, all the phonetic material that is around it are variations of these syllables which then come out uh, one by one. So it's never just a, a game. Uh, there's always something behind even the structures which are purely phonetic. There we are. There is phonetic material which doesn't mean anything, and I write it even in phonetic language. Uh, for example, the second moment, you remember after the first one, the moment of applause, which one by one formed, was transformed into music, then comes that moment. Uh, it doesn't mean anything, it is. Uh, no. I just did it. Yes. And then it says, etc. So this, there, there are concentrations of vowels and combined with, with uh, consonants as the beginnings and ends of certain syllables which uh, are nonsense syllables but used purely phonetically like timbres that's it that's it then there's other material that I found where I was working for example I have worked quite a few moments in an apartment in New York because I had to teach in Philadelphia. And 
In the department there were books left from the person who had lived in the department before me. There was a book uh, that I found uh, written by the Russian uh, scientist Malinovsky. The, book is, the title of the book is The Sexual Life of Savages. And in this book I found many, many uh, quotes from rituals from tribes in the upper Amazonas, uh, which he then translated what they mean. And I have used, because I found this as material, uh, quite a few quotes from this book. Uh, you remember just the moment, uh, the, this, well, two months before it ended. No, excuse me, I, I was, the one with the laughter and the, the giggling, I made a mistake, is this one. Two moments before the ending was this one. There, you hear, Kalakasi uh, Sabau. It says, Leuven. Au! Kalakasi Sabau. And the Bau is the name of a girl. And the Kalakasi uh, is our shouts that the girls are all shouting in when they dance in a circle around one girl in an initiation rite. And they say, Kala Kassisa Ba'u, Ba'u is the girl. Kassisam, 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 Kassisam. That, that's what I have used as material. i tell you the meaning uh, in private, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> and then... <laughs> You've told us already. <laughs> Oh, not quite. No, no. <laughs> not that, no. Uh, then there's other material that I have used from letters, which I got from a friend. The whole work is dedicated uh, to a young woman. It is, it is composition that is, it has all to do with love relationship. And, and many uh, different, uh, on many different levels. And uh, I took segments from a daily letter that, that they would come with the mail in the morning. Uh, Alles um mich herum ist mir ganz nah und fern zugleich. It is something that came in here. There are many other sentences like this. Everything surrounding me is near and far at once. There you have it. When I use, for example, inserts from such a moment where all of a sudden there is intelligible text, then the insert being put into another moment is sung in another language. So in this moment, everything here, in the MK moment, there is that German sentence. Alles um mich herum ist mir ganz nah und fern zugleich. And when this insert occurs for the first time in another moment, it says, everything surrounding me is near and far at once. So there, the different languages come in. When there is intelligible text, I use in the whole work four languages. There is the language of the country in which the piece is performed, with the choir of the country, which means when we come to England next year, nevertheless, we will the, the predominant language will be German because we have rehearsed it with the German choir and it will be a German choir coming from Cologne. If I would do it with the choir from England, the predominant language of the whole piece becomes English, which means everything that is in German, in original, is translated into English, and everything that is so called, is called the second language and the third language and the fourth language in this piece then is one of the other languages. In the German ver version, the second language is English, the third is French, and the fourth is Italian. So if you would perform it in Italy, then the first language becomes Italian, the second is English, the third is German, and the fourth is French. Or the third and fourth can be changed. Then the, the translations are given, and according to the place and the country where you perform it, then the predominant, uh, no, let's say the degree of of how much of each language is used in the piece changes. There is a casual material from letters. And then in most of the moments, uh, poetic material is used from the Song of Songs, from the Bible.
the most objective uh, love poem because we don't even know any longer who has written it and uh, most of the people know it so you can assume that it is a material that immediately rings a bell and it is very beautiful extremely beautiful so you hear always little bits of the song of songs in the different moments and I have very carefully chosen moments uh, excerpts which are more physical less physical more uh, on a spiritual level in uh, in the song of songs oh that though were my brother for example is has nothing to do with the sex relationship when it occurs for the first time uh, and uh, so I use it sometimes in a very general uh, context of what uh, love or interest mutual interest may mean and then the most uh, subtle material so to speak the most lyric material I have chosen also from uh, books that I had not in mind when I started but that I found in the same apartment that I, that I mentioned before I found a book with the collected poems of William Blake and I took out a phrase which you have just heard very quickly and which will come now in the continuation in this moment here sung very slowly and clearly by the solo soprano and not being disturbed by anything else and which is somehow the essence of what I mean by moment, instant, now, here the fulfillment, the degree of presence and that phrase sounds as follows he who kisses the joy as it flies lives in eternity's sunrise he who kisses the joy as it flies lives in eternity's sunrise that's momentum <coughs> We start now with the last moment, MD, because you will hear the female singers in a line, not yet polyphonically, like in the last moment. MD, and then comes the ID moment, which is the moment of the two Hammond organs. They have just one sound and change the color very slowly, and you dive into the inner of a long, sustained sound of four minutes. And then we come to the K moments, and then the end, will be the I moment, which is a moment of very tra transcendent prayer. You will feel that. He who kisses the joy as it flies lives in eternity's sunrise. That, that's coming now. Someone uh, want to say something? Ask something? <laughs> Thank you very much for your attention. Good night. Yeah.
No, I haven't actually. I didn't have yeah, yeah, right. a chance to see you. Well, I, I will be here for another day, that's all. I'm working tomorrow and I'm in the evening I'm giving you my right. lecture sometime. Mm. Well, well I give you my address, so it's so easy. Yeah, let me send it to you. I'd like that very much. If you can do something about this. I think you do. You do. Mind you, it's not your music. Your music is your music, and nobody uh, cannot write music like yours. <laughs> but it's um, something very, very special. And, and uh, I'd certainly like you to have a look at it. Here you are, Thank no you street Carl. address. Oh, lovely. Just as well. Within a day. I'll send them to you. I'll be very pleased if you are here from you mm. and see what you think. Yes. Okay, bless you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Really no, very thanks for coming. I've got the, Thank you. I've got, I, I, I've yes. got the record of this, mm -hmm. but it's much better here, much more. Yeah. Better. Sounds and, bigger. And some of the some of the ideas are, are so beautiful, are so important, but it's it's, mm. it's my my world mm. also. Mm. Yours. Mm, so fine. I'm very very uh, happy about it. I'm still actually still concerned with uh, um, I'm still concerned with, with lecturing as a matter of fact. It is here at the Zander Union. They find that easiest to get hold of. Right. I'm doing at the moment with the London University class. <laughs> Good luck to you. Good night. I wonder if I might say, excuse me, that you exemplify the music, what you say about the moment, but every move, every moment you listen is a, is a moment. Mm. You see, it exemplifies that. I don't know if you recall it, but I think we met in Rome a number of years ago. Did you no, I don't. Part? Don't you, you know, you look 20 years younger than you did 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I was just saying this to someone. It was at the Chelsea's, McCann, Francis McCann and Chelsea. Remember a Count Chelsea who wrote a quartet? Yes, one I know. Note. It, it but I can't Chelsea. remember. It was no. all Washington, but it was just really so, so tremendous what you've done. I decided that your sound trouvé makes you really kind of a Picasso of music. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, thanks for tonight. See you tomorrow. Thank you. See you tomorrow. I just got an application for from Darmstadt, and it says submit some works for development in the composition studio by a certain date. What happens if no? I have works no happen? idea, my dear. No. After Darmstadt uh, came into trouble last, no, two years ago. Yeah. Um, the director, Mr. Thomas, has made several changes in order to meet the criticism of several groups that had protested in Darmstadt against his way of making programs and arranging lectures. And I assume that they want to give the possibilities to young composers to experiment among themselves. That's why they say you should bring equipment. Yeah. I have no idea. I will give six seminars, three on mantra, with the two brother Kutarskis playing the examples and the excerpts, and three seminars with Stimmung, tuning for six vocalists, also with the ensemble, the six singers. Now, I will show the participants of the seminars a new technique that is used in Stimmung, the vocal technique, special technique that I have discovered for this particular piece. And I will show them how to do And both works will be publicly performed at this occasion. Yes. We've heard Thank about you. your Uber and Stimmung, which is the premiered in May, apparently. Yeah, uh, it's a text it? piece. Oh, yes. One of those text pieces. Since Austin Siebentag and I have written a whole book of other text pieces every once in a while, and ensembles who like to play these text pieces can play them. Are they published? Not yet, no. When is published? I don't know. At the moment, I, I 
have a break with my publishing. Oh, I see. Because <laughs> Alphonse Kantarski told us last year it'd be about a year or so. It hasn't come out no, yet. No, it will not. But the record is ready. Oh. It will come out any day. I have received already the first records. Do uh, Universal publish the score of Carrie? Because I've been trying right. to find it all over the place. Right. That, that is completely uh, prepared, but for score. It is uh, a manuscript which is reproduced of the four orchestras and four choirs in four scores. And the total... It's a mic tap on the head. <laughs>